Last but not least is Dr. Norberto Guzman. He holds a PhD in biochemistry and has worked for medical institutions and pharmaceutical companies, including Mount Sinai School of Medicine, Roche Diagnostic Systems, Hoff Hoffman LaRoche, and Johnson & Johnson. Tonight, he's going to be speaking to us about a portable instrument that can identify early warning biomarkers of a disease. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Guzman. Thank you. Well, I've been working in an instrument with the hope that we can have a specific biomarkers to be able to have a diagnostic before you can have the symptoms. So we have problems in the United States today. Uh, there are many diseases that are still misdiagnosed. We have a significant number of laboratory tests which are incomplete or they have limited information. And worse than that, some of this data is wrongful. So with this information, we also will have the wrong a way of treating a patient because we are going to have inappropriate treatment. So it's also difficult to accurately predict the evolution of the disease and the outlet of the treatment, how is going to be the therapy we're giving to you uh, correct or not. So also the cost is, is high. The tests are very high. So we limit the possibility of a patient going to visit a doctor and have more tests to be done. So also the diseases are silent. We are inside the body sometimes 10 years, like in cancer, for instance, and we have no idea we have that disease. So the advancement of medical technology yet is not reachable to everybody. So what can we do for this? Of course, we can have a comprehensive panels of biomarkers which are indicators of normal biological processes, of pathogenic processes, and the pharmacologic response to the therapeutic intervention. So biomarkers should be accurate and will be safely detected to identify a disease before its symptoms. Biomarkers should be predictor of the course of the disease and the outcome of the treatment. And biomarkers should be cost-effective, frequently measured, and accessible to everybody. So what are the facts? At least 12 million people in the United States are misdiagnosed. Yes, in the conservative way, between 20% and 80%, we miss the diagnosis in the first place. There are medical errors leading to permanent damage and death for more than 160,000 people. And we have adverse reaction to therapy in many places in the United States. Now, what about the cost of the drug? has been going anywhere from $100 to more than $30,000 for eight-week treatments. So this is almost 50,000% increase in the last two decades. So totally, we have now that in the last 10 years, the cost to the social system has been more than a trillion and is going in the direction of four trillions. So my goal is to have this instrument using the very advanced technology to be able to measure basically the needle in a haystack, substance that exists in the body but has such a small quantity, difficult to be detected. So the, the body is always in a constant balance. We have to have an homeostasis. Everything is very well synchronized. Everything is well connected. The moment we disrupt this, we have a problem. So even if you are an Olympic champion, you will have a disease. So my goal is to be able to incorporate all of this beautiful technology that exists today and bring it to the clinic. So we have to build more bridges. That's what we need. More instrumentation and more tools to be able to have this panel of biomarker for diagnosis, prognosis, the appropriate treatment, appropriate management disease, and hopefully more effective. So we know that if the disease is discovered in the very late stage, chances for survival are minimal. And the costs keep increasing at the family level, at the personal level, and of course to the society for a number of reasons. And one of those is the lack of detection method. Let's assume that you have diabetic type 2, and we were able to have the diagnosis of diabetic. By the time we do that, up to 50% of the cell function is completely lost. So this function is start almost a decade before the patient is diagnosed with this disease. Now, Chronic diseases, especially what we call cardiovascular diseases, cancer, 
respiratory are killing millions of Americans. More than 130 million Americans suffer from inflammatory diseases. Seven out of 10 people die of chronic diseases, and more than 40 million people die in the world for chronic diseases. So if we are able to have more biomarkers, let's assume here, for instance, if the glucose is elevated, and on top of that, we will have the measurement of glycosylated hemoglobin. Not only will we have the diagnostic, but we will have the prognosis, how the disease is being evolved through the time. And now we know that type 1 diabetic is an autoimmune disease. So if we're able to have these autoantibodies measured in a very early stage, we should be able to have a risk pro projection. So what I'm doing, I'm using two technologies. The technology of using this kind of a magnet, biological magnet, to capture these substances, specific substances, in millions of them, and then be able to separate them by immunoaffinity capillary electrophoresis. So today, there exists this technology in a monodimensional system. And what happened is that if the antibody or any other affinity ligand that has been immobilized capture one, two, three, or four, you have a total signal, all of them together. In the technology that I'm working, you have another dimension. So you can capture, even if there is cross-reactivity, but you can separate every one of them. So you have more options. You can separate, detect, identify, and characterize every one of them, especially if you hook to a very sophisticated uh, spectrometer like the mass spectrometry. So this is the instrument. Um, it's a, of the size, probably, of the laptop computer. And uh, you can inject all kinds of samples, um, blood, uh, cells, particles, chemical and biochemical substances, with the goal to be able to identify not only the substance, but the modified substance that changes during the disease process or a brand new chemical has never been identified. So my goal is to have this in a portable way that can be used everywhere. It could be used in an ambulance. So before the the patient reached the emergency room, we will have the diagnostic. Could be in very remote place, in places around the world that they don't have access to this technology and through the internet, giving that to a very sophisticated uh, laboratory that has a data bank that can interpret the data and send it back to, to the doctor uh, in that particular place. So in summary, you know, I wanted to facilitate accessibility and advanced medical technologies to everybody. The instrument should be simple, Accurate, sensitive, and very inexpensive. So early and accurate diagnosis can provide patients with better treatment options. The access to good quality diagnosis therefore for all diseases should contribute to reduce the cost that many societies are doing this, especially where chronic and infectious diseases are the major causes of death. Early and accurate detection of disease aims to avoid misdiagnosis, prevent unnecessary pain, disability, and have better medicine. What I wanted to finish now is with a quote from Isaac Newton. What we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. We we'll still need to do many things before we can diagnose the disease, before it has seen symptoms. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to open it up to one last Q&A session. Sure. So is this, this is for use in preventative care as well as in acute care. And how long does it take for the acute care if I'm in an ambulance for the results to, for, for an analysis? The goal is 20 minutes. Okay. From the moment you put the blood there to the moment you have the data. Is there a wider use for this then from a standard point of care when, when I'm... Well, you know, I'm focusing in the health problem, but you can... Uh, see the quality of the environment. Right. Okay. You can see the quality of the food we're eating. Uh, we can see almost anything because, like I said to you, it measures particles, cells, subcellular particle, virus, bacteria, almost anything. So even if you have a disease which is infectious disease, I can identify by this. Thank you. I'll pass her now. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I'm not the last one anymore. Um, so traditionally speaking, like when you do like pharmacogenomic testing and even some of the lab results, 20 minutes is pretty, pretty fast. I mean, how far away do you think we are from that being something more of a standard of care is part one to the question I have. 
Well, I've been working for 20 years in this project, so it's not new. I have several publications, several patents, and I have a prototype. And people are now are trying to do this all over. There are other publications from other laboratories. So we have data to prove this. The fact is, how can we have more biomarkers that has not been yet identified? So that in a single injection of urine or saliva, you can have the diagnosis. My goal is to have this in the home of every individual, like a laptop, the way that you have your computer at home, put your saliva, and you didn't press the button, get all this electroferrogram, and then send it to the internet. So, I mean, it sounds like 23andMe. How would you compare that versus what 23andMe is doing for the... Well, it's not the same. This is a two-dimensional. You know, you're talking about uh, genetic tests in which they're amplifying the system and get a, a mutation, for instance, okay? This could be anything. Could be a gene, a carbohydrate, could be a protein, could be an ion, could be all together. So, and it's going in a sequential mode. So you can have one injection of urine, 20 milliliters, for instance. In each one of the analyte concentrator, you should be able to have different biomarkers. And then in a sequential order, you identify. So you can have, in addition to what many other companies are doing, pieces of DNA or pieces of transfer RNA or proteins of peptides, modified systems, all together in a simple package. I think what Clark, though, is alluding to um, with regard to what is a, the 23 and me is that so the similar, I think, problem that I see is that you are enabling access to a ton of data. But then what do you necessarily do with that data? Right. So if someone is in their home and they see that they have high levels of dopamine or something like that. Well, what, have... what are the next steps or even doctors? Right. How, how are they going to how are they? How do you envision them using this? Well, this is connected, like I said, to the Internet. Once you have the data, go to a central laboratory. The central laboratory have a data bank of millions of people. So we will match that data with the data we already know for leukemia, for the data we already know for these. And so we will send back chances are this is the disease, and then you send to a specialist for further testing. Uh, uh, I'm just assuming then a lot of that data will, will be anonymized, right? From a security and privacy standpoint, things well, going over the internet and things <laughs> go into the cloud. Uh, you know, there's gonna, be, there's gonna be a lot of concerns with this information being out there. So I'm, I'm gonna assume once it gets to that point, security will probably be paramount. Uh, absolutely, but remember, I'm, as a scientific person, looking one way how to solve the problem that you may have cancer today, you have no clue that you do. But what happened, many people go to see a physician and you say, you know what, you're in stage four cancer. And unfortunately, you have six more months to go. Do you remember the story of Dr. Um, Randy Pouch? Well, if you see the YouTube, you will see that. Healthy person, a brilliant individual, okay? He knew he had pancreatic cancer. He couldn't do anything. What about if he knew 10 years prior to that? He couldn't be alive today. Are, are the biomarkers, I, and I just don't understand this, uh, similar between individuals? So if I have high hemoglobin and low, and another counterpart has a similar thing, is it possible that we don't share the same disease and it just happens to be my? Well, that happened today with the symptoms of the disease. So you go to see a doctor, the doctor will tell you, this is what you have, based on a similar symptom from another person. With a biomarker, you don't have the problem, because either you're identical or you're not. Okay. Okay? The problem that we have, think about autistic children. You know, at the age of two, you should be able to have the diagnosis definitively. Sometimes mothers don't know until they are four, five years of age, it's too late. Thank you so much. We have to wrap it up at this point. Let's give one last round of applause for all the pioneers.